so we were doing this uh, with Bernoulli trials. Um, so let me just uh, quickly recap a bit of what we were doing in the previous class. So the idea was uh, to understand if you repeat an experiment many, many times, how does one assess the, the framework? How does one set up the framework and assess the probability of any event at the interest? So the idea was to set it up as Bernoulli trials. So each trial has the following property that there's, a, there's success and failure and the probability of success is going to be P and the probability of failure is going to be 1 minus P. So then we decide the example in which we said, okay, we roll a die two times and we want to understand the chance that there's a six appear only once. So one approach we have seen before is that you write out all possible outcomes in 36 3 outcomes write down. You write down an event E of interest and write down the probability. But we know that this also has pitfalls because if we do this n times, we can't possibly write down all the outcomes of E. It's very hard to write down and count them. So then we said that, okay, since we're only concerned with six, we can set this up as a Bernoulli 1, 6 experiment and perform the calculations. So then we had a, we had a sort of structure in which we wanted to find out 1, 6 appears in two trials. That was same as success, failure, failure, success. <coughs> Excuse me. And we did have this disjoint events, use independence and Bernoulli to understand the answer. So then we decide, okay, now how does the framework work? So we have n trials, we perform n independent Bernoulli trials. Probability of each trial has x success probability is p, each trial is independent, how does one do this? So now I want to understand the chance there are k successes. So the way we did it was, we first observed the following idea, that since each trial is independent, if we have an event EI that concerns itself with only the ith trial, then the probability of intersection is the product of probabilities. And now we are interested in the chance that BK, that there are k successes in n trials. So in that notation, the probability of BK is the sum of the probability of every outcome in the set BK. But for every outcome in BK, we know that the omega i's, that only k of them are successes and the rest of them are all failures. So then, in the product of EI, you get p power k for the k successes, 1 minus p power n minus k for the n minus k failures. And then we notice that everybody in BK has the same probability. Right? So, so every outcome in BK has the same probability. The probability being p power k, 1 minus p power k. So we luck out. So we know the chance of probability of BK is just the size of BK times the probability of every particular outcome and that gives you this nice formula. So that's where we were at last time. So now this is uh, this sort of a, uh, a thing can generalize for any, any n and uh, it's sort of a very nice formula that you have. And also one can note the following that uh, you know that uh, the probability of uh, bk uh, and the sum over k equal to 0 to n, that is this, this is the same as, uh, so what is this going to be? So what is it? this is going to be the same as the sum over k equal to 0 to n, n choose k, p power k, 1 minus p power n minus k, and this is a binomial expansion we know that that's going to be the same as uh, p plus 1 minus p, p plus 1 minus p to the power n, and that's just going to be 1. But then, if you look at this side right here, let's go in green, let's see what happens. So this side is just, a, I'm just using the binomial expansion, that is, that is a plus b to the power n is just a, this n choose k, a power k, b power n minus k. And then this guy here, since the bk's are all disjoint events, this disjoint bk's, right? This is the same as the chance that I have union k equal to 0 to n bk, 
But if you look at this, that means in n trials, I can have zero success, two success, blah, blah, all the way till n success. That's just the same as the anybody in the sample space can happen. So we have, we have just in a roundabout way, we have shown that our probability set up correctly. And so probability is equal to one. So, so in a roundabout way, uh, we have sort of set up things correctly. So our setup, set up an answer is correct. To this okay. Right, so, so the one question was asked recently that will the two approaches give two different answers? So, uh, so that's not that 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 you can verify is not is not going to happen. The approach will give the same answer to the same event. So the probability will be the same. So it's not a because I'm using the same structure of independence to get the answer. That's the whole whole uh, idea of setting it up properly like this is Bernoulli trials. So now this is something we can sort of understand and see, and then this is uh, a this one, this concept one can use quite a bit. So let's do another one. Let's do another another thing in terms of independent trials. Let's see. So let's try and do this. Let's try and see. Uh, let's try and do another question. Let's say this is C in the in the in the in the book. I'll leave it as C. Question number C. I won't do B. You can do B yourself. So let's say I want to know how many trials are required. to obtain the first success. So uh, that means how many trials do you have to make till you observe the first success. So how does one do this? That means, let's say uh, you can have a success in the first trial so let's say let uh, let AI, let's go AI. Let's do the answer. AI be the trial, be the, be the event. Um, let me write it down properly. AI is the event that the I trial is a success. And uh, let CK be the event that that the first success. Occurs in the kth trial. Now, so what I want to understand probability of CK, right? So, what is probability? What is CK going to be? So, this implies what is CK going to be? CK is going to be, is going to be what? Is going to be the intersection so you have a a1 complement should happen a2 complement should happen and the failure in the second trial should happen all the way and the k minus one trial a failure should happen and then in the last trial we should have success that's what ck is so, so ck means the first success occurs in the k trial that means you have failure all the way up to the k minus one trial and suddenly in the kth trial, you have your first success. That is exactly what this problem. So now this can be calculated quite easily, right? Because now so the full probability of CK is going to be the probability of the intersection of I equal to one to K minus one of AI complement and AK. And that's just going to be the product of I equal to one to K minus one probability of AI complement times probability of AK. But that we already know is same as 1 minus P to the power, let me write it properly. That is so it's wrong. So same as the product of 
i equal to 1 to k minus 1, probability of ai complement times probability of ak, and that's the same as p power 1 minus p to the power k minus 1 times p power times k. So what have I done here? I have, let me just write it in, in black for me because the probability is always like this in script three. So then what have I done here? What have I used here? Here I've used description of CK from above. Here I've used the fact that in our independence. Right? Here I've used the fact that these come from K failures, right? And this comes from uh, success. Right? So this is just this one minus P is the probability of, of failures, right? So this has a nice name. This is called uh, this, this distribution is called geometric uh, geometric p. Uh, so one could so here is the notation. I'll, I'll I'll read it again. So here's two notation. So here's notation. So one could view the above question. So what are the question? How many trials are required to obtain the first success? That was the question. Right? So one could view this as an experiment with sample space as one, two, three, it takes you so, on, so many trials with the first success. And the probability of every outcome that, that is k is the chance that the first success comes in the kth trial. That's the same as one minus p to the k minus one so one could view it like this, this experiment. So this whole thing is called geometric P. So it's a distribution on S, or you could think of it as a sort of a, or the way you think of Bernoulli trials and look at the number of trials to case success. So, so we have seen uh, two ways of doing it. So one is, uh, so one notation is this. Uh, this. This is one notation. The other notation I'd like to sort of introduce is that an experiment. You can use this is how you do geometric. Let's write geometric like this. this is geometric. Geometry can be viewed as a coin toss or a rolling die, but with two events, success and failure. And then you look at the number of trials required to get the kth success, first success. That's suppose the kth trial with this probability. You could also view this, you could also view the Bernoulli trial as an experiment uh, with two outcomes. So I can think of the outcomes as let's say uh, zero or one, or success failure, or whatever you want to do. And you can think of the probability of one as success as p, and, uh, and probability of zero as uh, one minus p. So this, this is what you would call as the Bernoulli distribution. And the experiment where we had this we observed k successes, we would think of it as n is fixed, and you look at the experiment as uh, with s equal to let's say zero, one, up to k, and all the way to up to n. So this represents the number of successes in n trials, and you think of the probability of the if of k successes in n trials as probability of k. We think of it as n choose k, p power k, 1 minus p to the power n minus k. This has a name and this is called the binomial uh, n. So we will, we will go up and down with these names. Uh, so if I say binomial n p, that means I can think of it as an experiment on with sample space as 0, 1 up to n with these probabilities. Or I could think of it as performing n independent Bernoulli trials and counting number of successes. And I could use any notation I want to use. So that's one, one advantage of this framework. Right. So that's, that's the broad uh, message in this whole thing. So if you want to do the same experiment many, many times, you, you, you 
just have to make sure that the event interested you're interested in can be classified as a success or a failure in each trial. And then you're on your way. And this gives rise to three distributions on three different sets. One set is the set of natural numbers S, which is and gives each natural number a weight like 1 minus P to the K minus 1 times P. The other one just does 0, 1, and the binomial one does for N from 0 to N. So yes. Now the uh, this is all very nice, and then the thing is that uh, there's something one has to do, one has to be aware of the following is that uh, is is computational. So let me just uh, uh, illustrate that. And that gives rise to another distribution called Poisson, which I'll try to explain in the next uh, 10 minutes or 20 minutes. So the idea is that uh, let's say you're, you're an ISI, let's say you're an ISI, uh, let's do a simple example. Uh, let me write the examples in blue as before. So let's say you're in a small college. So uh, this is an example, uh, let's say 2.2.1, uh, I have put in the book. So let's say you're in a small college. Uh, uh, let's say like a, a small institution that has 1,460 students, let's say. And, uh, and let's say I ask you, uh, uh, let's assume that everybody, assume that uh, birth rates are constant. constant uh, throughout the year. Then what is the probability that, uh, let's ask the question, what is the probability that five or more students were born in defense. Right. Suppose I ask this question. So uh, this is what this is. Uh, so this one can one can think a little bit. Uh, let, let me see how to do, how how do you want to think a little bit about this question? Uh, how do you want to do this? So you could think of it as a Bernoulli trial with. Uh, so your one, pro your each student has a probability of one over three sixty five of being born on on a particular day, and you want only four of them to be born, and uh, uh, no, five or more to be born on that day. So what you could do is you could do a this is a simple exercise. So this is a, so you could I'll I'll leave it as an exercise to check the following. That. This probability that five or more were born on Independence Day is the same as probability, is the same as first thing you do is like, I, I won't write, write everything out, so the same as one minus the probability that at most four were born on Independence Day. So that's easy to do. On independent day, and that's the same as one minus the sum from k equal to zero to four, the chance that k were born on independent day, okay. now. The key is the following idea that this is the same as one minus. So you look at every student has a has a Bernoulli trial, and the chance of success is one over three sixty five. 
So that means this is the same as sum from k equal to 0 to 4. The chance of k successes in 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 1, 4, 6, 0 trials, that's the same as saying 1, 4, 6, 0, choose k, 1 over 365 to the power of k, and 364 over 365 to the power of 1, 4, 6, 0 minus k. And that will be the answer. So, so let me just, uh, notation-wise, let me rewrite this. Let me rewrite this as answer. And I'll put X as exercise, uh, as a sketch. Uh, so what do you have to justify? Let me also write down what I'll justify. So the exercises. So one is that this part is clear, right? This part is just using the fact that uh, a P of A is uh, using the part that about probability. There's no problem. The probability of computers. That part is easy. So now the this part also is easy, it's just using the fact that you have disjointed it. Disjointed. So if you have at most k four things, you have k equal to 0, 4, and 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's a union. So here the idea is here's where the, the mathematics come in. You set it up, you set up the problem as you set up the problem as 1, 4, 6, 0, Bernoulli. 1 over 365 trials. Right, that, that was a crucial part right here in this, in this setup right here to get this answer. Okay, not this answer, this part, this is this, this part. That was a part to get. And that's how I get the answer. So this, this is something you have to write out properly, but I have, I have sort of given a quick uh, immediate way of getting the answer. And and the steps are kept fairly clear about it. But now there's another problem now. Now the thing is that I don't know if you notice it. Uh, you try to do this in a calculator, it'll be quite hard. You know, um, see these are uh, one over three sixty five is small. This is quite large, the other one. And then you have to compute one four six zero. Choose four. That's quite hard to do. You have to do one four six zero factorial. So one four six zero. Let's say choose three. So computational difficulties are following. So let's say computation. Difficulties like are quite large because you do this the same as one four six zero factorial by three factorial, and then the other one is a uh, one four six zero minus three, which is uh, sorry, is one four uh, by seven factorial. So if you can do a little bit here, you can you can you can do a little jugglery and get the answer. Right? You can just do one four six zero into one four six. Uh, uh, 1459. In this case, you can do you can do this out juggling by weight and then divide by 3 into 2 into 1. That's the answer. That's how you can compute these guys. And then for 4, you can do it. But the moment I I, I get larger than if I, if I ask the same question, if I ask the same question, let's say, say 100 were born on Independence Day. On Independence Day, the question is quite hard to do. In this day, it becomes computationally difficult. So we must develop a, a different way to do this. So, like, what can we use here? So, what can we use? What can we use in this problem? So the idea is that um, the, the no, the, what, what we can use here is the following, use here is that uh, n is 1, 4, 6, 0, that's total number of trials, that's n equal to this. And p is 1 over 365, right, that's a success. And p is kind of much, much smaller than n. So can we somehow use this, uh, can we use this? So can we, can we somehow use this fact that this this thing's happening? So can we somehow use this idea to try and see to resolve this competition difficulty? Because if if four was replaced by a hundred, then this competition becomes much much harder to do. 
So I'll close off with a theorem, which we'll come and show next time, uh, and then in the next class. So the theorem is the following. So how to resolve the complete difficulties? So the theorem is the following. So very very uh, 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 fundamental theorem. It's called the Poisson approximation. So let lambda be positive. Uh, k be bigger than or equal to 1, n be at least lambda, and p be equal to lambda by n. Okay, so. Okay, so this is something I, I'm setting up in the beginning. Okay. So then we consider n Bernoulli p trials. Okay. So note, uh, all I'm doing is I'm considering performing n independent trials with probability p success. So let me erase, erase this a little bit. Let me write this here. Uh, so let me consider n independent trials. So and the, the one of the things to note in mind, one is that uh, each trial is independent, n independent trials. And then the Bernoulli, the probability depends on n. So it's lambda by n. Okay, so the, that's the crucial part you have to be careful about. That is the that is dependence on n. So for large n, I'm I'm having success probabilities getting smaller and smaller. Because p is lambda by n. So then I, I do this. So n is fixed, let's say n is fixed. Then I do this following. I want to compute, let's say ak is the event that there are k successes in n trials. So n is sort of hidden in the in the k, in the ak, but so this is n, n Bernoulli p by trial. You say n Bernoulli p trials, n Bernoulli. P trials. Then uh, I want to know uh, this. We already know that the chance that a sub k your n k success in n Bernoulli p trials we already know it's n choose k p power k one minus p to the power n minus k. This we already know from before. There's no problem. But what the theorem says is theorem right? limit as n goes to infinity the probability of a k. That is if n is large and p is small, then what happens is the limit approaches a fixed number for every k and that's lambda power k by k factor. So this is true for all k. So k is equal to 0, 1, 2. So let k be equal to one of these guys. So fix a k. Once you fix a k, you let a k be this, and this happens. So that means what you what how you interpret this? Uh, if you want to compute, so here the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, you interpret it in the following manner. You interpret as n is being very very large, and p, which is lambda by n, is being very very small. But p is not too small. It's just n times p is always a constant lambda. So if you have a situation where p is very very small but n times p is a constant, then you can use this idea to sort of compute the problem. We will prove this in the next class.